Hey, everybody, this is Scoots, and you're listening to Bedtime Stories from Sleep With Me, which is just stories from the Sleep With Me podcast. Uh, so if you like the stories from Sleep With Me, you've been checked out our original podcast to full length. Uh, it's uh, called Sleep With Me. And if you enjoy these stories, you could support the production of the show and get tons of stories only versions of Sleep With Me on Sleep With Me Plus. If this show is worth, if you listen to it on a regular basis, you say, this show is worth 60 bucks a year to me. This show is worth 120 bucks a year to me. Sign up. Uh, you can sign up monthly or annually. You get a podcast with story-only versions of Sleep With Me uh, like this, but uh, ad-free. You get full versions of Sleep With Me, bonus versions of Sleep With Me. And uh, you help us keep making this show well into hopefully uh like the long long future so but if you're new check this out this is uh, called bedtime stories from sleep with me and it'll be bedtime stories from sleep with me podcast thanks and good night friends beyond the binary ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and whether you're if you're a baby you, you may not know you're listening to this uh but if you're a baby at heart uh like i am uh, it, 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 uh, I don't know what any of that has to do. Well, hopefully you'll be sleeping like a baby, like a baby that's actually sleeping, not sleeping like a baby. People always say that. And I guess a comedian probably already did this as a routine. But say, I don't think you've met any babies before. Maybe we could get Wallace Shawn to do that and be like, are you sure you've met a baby? Like, uh, when you say sleeping like a baby, that's asleep. Uh, during that exact moment, you catch the baby in deep sleep before, if it's in my case, you trip over everything. And then, uh, but anyway, <laughs> if you're confused as I am, you're in the right place because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And here's a couple ways we're able to be here for you for free twice a week. If you remember when your hand hits that fridge tomorrow, check them out. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. If you're looking for the most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me podcast or bedtime stories from Sleep With Me, you can get yourself a pair of sleep phones, like Sleep With Me merchandise uh, sleep phones with different uh, logos and cool stuff on there. And you can get that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and use Sleep With Me at checkout to save five bucks off your order. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, Scoots here. It's, uh, this is the first time we've done, we've done stuff similar to this before, but this is different in some sense. Uh, and uh, we'll, so we'll see how it goes. It's going to be fun. And um, I'm just trying to figure out the, the proper setup because this is, this is the first time we're doing this. There may be, will there be a second time? Maybe, probably. Uh, but I can't be a hundred percent sure. But so, you know, we've done board game unboxings before and this one is a little bit different than that. Uh, like, uh, like I'm big in, I'm not a bit, uh, well, I guess I, I, I like going to thrift stores and, um, like particularly, uh, like ones affiliated, like rescue mission, Salvation Army, Goodwill, or smaller ones. And I don't go there for fashion because uh, I just don't have, like, a, it's not my, not my uh, forte. Sometimes I'll look uh, at clothes, but I de de definitely don't, my brain doesn't work that way. And I got my daughter into it, though we tend to go to the stores at a different pace. I tend to go at a pace that's exact opposite of sleep with me. That's how I do my most of my life other than this podcast at a rate that could be described as furious. Uh, so I tend to go, I tend to look at records just to see. Here's the here's a thing. If you need a Jim Neighbors record, just go to any Goodwill, any used to store. That's not an insult to Jim Neighbors. Jim Neighbors was a star on television before I was b b b b even a lad or a twinkle in anyone's eye. Not that I've ever been a twinkle in anybody's eye. But anyway, Jim Neighbors was a TV star that also had a singing career. And here's what, like, because most professional people that buy stuff at thrift stores and then resell it, they get all the records you would actually want to listen to, for the most part. I'm not saying all the time. 
So if you go to a Goodwill, you could get Jim Neighbors records. Um, sometimes you could get good musicals or operas or classical record albums. Sometimes you could get good holiday albums. And I'm trying to think what else you can normally get. Uh, that's And then other than that, it tends to be uh, interesting. But not the good, I mean, not, for the most part, not the good kind of interesting. How am I talking about records? One day we'll do that, but uh, not the good kind of interesting, the kind of interesting where you're like, uh, oh, I never listened to that. Uh, like uh, like somehow, I, I, I think I've gotten records like that. I said, oh, I'll listen to that. Uh, a band that had one hit wonders, other albums, like as normally, like from classic rock. You say, okay. I didn't know, um, I'm trying to think of a band without, um, I don't know. So anyway, BTO, you see, I don't know any BTO songs, but I know I know one. I just don't know the name of it. And it's not on this album that I bought. Okay. So going with that, I found recently a new kind of item occasionally c could appear and I got really lucky twice or three times, but, uh, and was and I didn't even think to look was magic tricks uh, or magic trick sets. And so I don't know how long this setup will take. It might take so long for me to set this up that it'll be a whole nother episode, but I, I don't think so. Um, or maybe I could talk about some of it on this episode and then on another episode. But so it was the holiday season of 2021, and I was thinking of. Uh, I don't know, it's just my brain was just, you know, running through stuff. Uh, and I said, remember one, one, one holiday season, we got a magic set, and we may have gotten more than one. And then I also remembered, wait a second, I got a used magic set one time at a garage sale. Well, I don't think it was a, like a, at a store, but it was at like a garage sale or something. And so... um I was like thinking about it. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if any good like of the stores have uh, magic tricks that I uh, peruse. And it turns out the answer is yes, they do. The one thing I found now he doesn't listen to this podcast, uh, but I found like these the, not just one, but a two pack of this magic set. The same magic kit twice was packaged together. Like I assume someone had had two of them and donated them. And I don't know if they were having trouble selling them. So then they put them together. And I said, well, I can get one for me and one for somebody else. Now, no, going forward, I don't think I'll ever do any magic tricks. So you could say I'm an aspirational musician. <laughs> I'm an aspirational musician and a magician or a conjurer. And that's okay. Like, I know who I am sometimes, and I know I'm only going to be an aspirational ma magician. Now, if you want a real podcasting magician, uh, Phoebe, uh, Phoebe Judge is the foremost, I would say, or like a podcasting, a podcaster of renown who is also can, is a magician or performer of magic tricks. I don't know what the proper term is even. That's how, like, uh, I can't even aspire to, to, to address it correctly. So, um, okay, so where are we at? So we'll open up this magic set, but I wanted to kind of set up my some of my relationship with magic. I did see Phoebe do one magic trick, uh, I think in Seattle one time. Oh no, and then on on and performing, the, 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 Phoebe did a, 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 a one when I saw a, a Criminal Live in San Francisco. And shout out to Lauren, uh, who is also a friend of the show, friend of mine. So, uh, uh, producer Criminal and uh, Phoebe reads a mystery. And uh, uh, is this is love or is this love? Uh, is this love? No, that's a song. That's a, that's a BTO song. Scoots. No, I think that's uh, White Snake, actually. White, uh, and uh, I don't know what, but okay, so magic. Let's focus on magic here. I have some good magic stories, but let's just focus for now, and then I'll tell some of the other ones maybe later. I've told a couple of them before, 
But so here's the things I remember about getting a magic set uh, when I was a kid, and maybe more than one. Now, here's one, one honest thing. I have no idea if I asked for them or someone said, maybe this kid's so strange uh, he'll like magic set. Because I don't remember, like, wanting to do magic, but I do remember getting more than one magic set. And I'm not saying that in a pejorative way. Like, I was a strange child. I had strange tastes. So someone's saying, huh, maybe this maybe this will be the thing. The kid, he was a gymnastic school dropout, basketball camp dropout. I quit basketball camp the first day. When someone asked me why my face was so red from running, and like I said, one gymnastics. Once I found out I wasn't going to be doing flips within a, with a, within the first class, I said, "This is definitely not." I said, "I'm sorry. What we're just going to run and touch the the spring? I'm here to spring and sprung, and many other things I didn't follow through on, but." Um, Ma- and magic's, magic's in that great category for me. A little bit, yeah. So I got this magic set. The one I know I got was uh, from a magician named Blackstone. And now I'll have to research it because I say, was it, who is it like? Is that person, uh, is it even proper to talk about them? And um, let's see. I tr- and I think, it, and then I got the used magic set. I think around the same time because then I tried to combine them. But I didn't do very many magic tricks, even the ones because, and and I don't want to, um, I think it was just my, I'm not ambitious. And while there are things I've learned to follow a set prescribed a series of steps with, uh, it's not a, it's not something, um, that, uh, I'm really, yeah, I'm not exactly skilled at it as far as, uh. I'm just not, like, a follow, follow through is just not, was not my thing even as a kid. I remember there was, like, a bottle one. I mean, I'm sure the, the most basic ones I was able to do, but, I mean, one of the beautiful things about magicians and, and people, especially close-up magic, is that it takes a lot of practice to create those illusions. And one of the gifts I have is my memory is not good. And I'm easily... I'm easily, I sus, my suspension of disbelief is, and my ability to catch stuff is not great. So I really am like a magician, like I love magic. Uh, so let's, we'll just talk about that for a second. I love, and I don't like him. I haven't been to the Magic Castle, haven't been to any magic shows in Vegas. So I guess I'm not, quali- I, I like magic. I guess I'm not qualified to say I love magic. But I do not remember, even if someone shows me how they performed a trick, and then, I mean, as long as like 6 to 12 months pass, I'll have, I, could, I could see the trick again. I'll have no idea how they did it. And part of me really doesn't want to know. I mean, I guess sometimes it's cool when those, those specials used to be on. I watched all those specials, and then I would see them, and then I would watch them again years later, and I'd say, I have no idea how they do that trick. And I still don't. Uh, and then I remember when David, no, who was it? Uh, was it David Blaine started to, he, he, he like seemed to rise to quick prominence. And uh, he was very skilled at, uh, like, I remember watching a special probably in the aughts. Uh, and my mind was blown. Like some of the stuff he was doing, this was early David Blaine, or well, once he was famous, but not when he was doing these endurance challenges that he became known for probably in the later aughts, but he was doing more, uh, and this kind of goes in, this is a good introduction to what we're talking about, because I don't know the timelines, so maybe I could look that up too, of David Blaine and then this particular magic kit, but David Blaine, they called it street magic, and if you're not familiar with David Blaine, he's a very charismatic, uh, a uh, handsome, I would say, illusionist or magician or performer of magic. And he became more known for doing these kind of, uh, these other things like, uh, you know, whatever, sitting in something on the London Bridge or something like that. And those were cool too. Uh, but he also would do the magic where he'd be just walking around 
And this is just my, like, I'll just do like, like he'd, he'd walk up to a group of people. Uh, this would be his, the first special I remember seeing. And he'd say, Hey, like to a group of people, like in, um, like Venice or Santa Monica or something. He'd say, Hey, what, what's going on? Uh, and he'd say, uh, um, look at your forearm and people person would look at a, their form and there'd be like, uh, uh, like, uh, two, like there'd be a, a Sharpie of like the two of spades there. And then Dave Blaine would have it on his forehead when they looked back up or something. Or he'd say, pick a card. And then all of a sudden a skywriter would do the card or would have already done the card that they picked, uh, and I'm not doing it justice, like, uh, or one time, like, it's like he had, like, it was stuff like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just seemed impossible. And I'm not, I'm willing to believe because I'm not like, oh, this is just a, a gimmicky editing or something. So, I don't know. So, like, it was really cool. And he called, they, they called it, oh, street magic because he's just out on the street, uh, which at least when you're watching on TV... You say, okay, well, there's the, the, going to be less likely. He doesn't have a stage or whatever. So that brings us to this to these magic kits I found. And I'm going to grab the box cover first and then describe that, and then we'll go from there. Now, I will change it a little bit because just because I don't want to, um, I don't know anything about it. For magicians aged eight and to adult, so that's a good sign. And I'm going to call it Marty's Magic. Marty's Mind-Blowing Magic. Marty's Magic is number one for magic worldwide. And magic's kind of written in a little bit of like a graffiti style um, with two arrows going in different directions. And this was back when stuff was on DVD. I'll, I'll try to find a date on the box. I only have a half the box. And it comes with a quality shoulder bag. Loaded with cool collection of amazing magic tricks and stunts. And then it has a DVD. Then it has what I, who would I assume is Marty holding up a King of Hearts and covering one of his eyes. So you can only see one of his eyes. And he's kind of cloaked with a little bit of shadow. And it says it includes a DVD, amazing secret cards, mysterious mind reading, spooky magic, illusions, defy gravity... Appear, transform, and vanish. Unbelievable streetwise trickery. Plus exclusive magic bag. And it's a pretty big box. Like, it's a rectangle. Bigger than a um, board game, but not that much bigger. And the majority of the box is uh, a black and white photo with the background kind of streaked uh, out of focus. And on the left side of the photo is the back of Marty. He has sunglasses on, and we only see the back of his head. I assume it's Marty. And his, the bag that comes with the magic set is in color, and he's holding a card, which is also in color. And then there's a group of one, two, three, four, five, six children who I would assume are aged 8 to 12, maybe even 14, and they're watching and their minds are blown. And they're all different kind of reaction shots, so whether the kids were acting or not, they really did a good job, or the foot photographer did. Because you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different reactions, all of amazement. Though the kid all the way on the left, he looks more stunned, and he's actually not looking at, well, he has sunglasses on, so he's actually not looking at the, Huh. And actually, if we had a magnifying glass, we could look at the reflection of sunglasses. Uh, doesn't seem to be matching what we're seeing, but uh, I'll have to do that. And Marty uh, is the creator of a mind-blowing set. Gives you everything you need to baffle and mystify audiences. But I don't see a date anywhere, but I do have this uh, instruction book. Oh, 2003. So this was the aughts. It's from you, the UK. And uh, I'm not going to read the instructions because I'm not here to expose behind the magic. Like I said, I like to be baffled. But I'm more, I think what I was more into was the accoutrement of the magic. Uh, let's just see how many tricks it comes with since I have the instructions in my hand. Uh, 
Uh, first, we have an introduction, new generation of magicians, mind-blowing tricks. This will give you everything you need, tricks and props with a unique magic shoulder bag. I wonder if the shoulder bag is actually magic. Unlike the years of dedicated practice that professional magicians require, you'll be able to do it quickly. But once you've learned how to do it, you got to practice and patter your words and every gesture until you're confident. That way, it'll go some way. And then it has, uh, on the, like, one, two, three. I wonder if this is how many tricks it has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen squares. Not with tricks, but different stuff that comes in there. Okay, it comes with uh, the shoulder. Let's see, shoulder bag. Oh, I don't want to read this because this is all the things. Uh, but I want to see. Do oh, I do want to see how many things it does come with? Because this is a pretty good deal. I don't, I'd have to look at how much it costs me. It looks like there's 49 tricks uh, total, and it actually talks about Marty, uh, who, whose name I changed just in case. Uh, they grew up in a magical family surrounded by some of the most famous m people in the world. It looks like Marty's a famous UK magician. So Close-up magic, 15 years, inspired to hundreds of thousands of uh, budding magicians worldwide. 2003. So now I have in my hands the bag. And what's, what's funny about it is uh, that these bags are... Uh, these bags have kind of come back in style. I don't know the quality of the bag. I'll have to check the stitches and stuff. Uh, but it's a blue camo bag. So it has one, two. So it has like a royal blue, a navy blue, a light blue, and a very dark blue, indigo maybe even, um, camo. It has a rubber tag on it. This is mind blowing. It's a shoulder bag, so it's not quite what's back in, which is um, what are those things called that you wear around your waist? Uh, fanny pack. This is a shoulder bag, and actually these were big in the aughts. I bought one in Italy, in Florence, Italy, I believe. Uh, a shoulder bag uh, to wear around the rest of when I was cruising around Europe. Or actually, I was only cruising around Italy, but my brother lived there. So it's a shoulder bag, or like what they call a cross-body bag nowadays. It has like a vertical zipper, which probably isn't good because it probably, for me, stuff would fall out. So it has a front pocket with a, what do you call that? Uh, it's not lace, uh, Kind of like a netting type of thing. You, and it has a front pocket. The front pocket with uh, Velcro is pretty, um, pretty uh, Velcro sturdy, and it has room in there. And let's just check the stitching. It does have uh, one of those. Uh, it looks like it's actually, like the bag is actually made from, the material's pretty thick too. Definitely has a... Uh, smell like it's been inside packaging since 2003, which it has. Uh, and now's the exciting part because I'm just going to um, hold the bag. I put everything in the bag from the box, uh, and then I'm going to reach in the bag, and we'll see what we come out with, huh? Okay, the first thing was the DVD. I don't think I... Oh, no, I have an uh, Xbox, so I could put this in the Xbox maybe. So it's the DVD. It has Marty on the left holding the King of Hearts uh, in a black suit or a really dark blue suit, a dark blue, like, matching, no tie. It's 56 minutes. Uh, the, the DVD's from 2004, though, the copyright. Mind-blowing magic, cool, amazing tricks, miraculous mind-reading, tricks with money, tricks and stunts. So that's the DVD. Let's see what we pull out next. And then I'll, maybe I'll just contemplate, like, what it is. Okay. This one is, uh, it's a, uh, what would you call this? It kind of looks like a tongue depressor. I'm sure that it's, like, it's a shape, uh, or, like, you know what you used to, a pizza peel shape? Like, you know how it has the handle, and then the pizza peel part. But if the pizza peel, peel part was elongated into a thing, um, and it's silver, and then on one side are two 
uh, uh, flying friends, we'll say. Uh, oh, house, house, house flying friends, the like plastic versions of them. And then on other, the other side is one. So I was trying to like flick it back and forth. I don't know if that's a trick because it's not doing anything. Um, but, uh, yeah. And, and then I think that I know there's another one in there. So I don't know what kind of trick this would be because I'm not a magician, but maybe like making them disappear or maybe you hold it up. I, I don't know. Or maybe it's some sort of counting game. I don't know. So that's that one. Okay. So my hand just touched something. Oh boy. Okay, cool. This is, uh, what we got here? This one's, uh, folded up. Okay. So this is appearing banknotes and, but on the other side it has a card and it's, uh, um, and then inside is a card or a couple cards. Uh, I don't know if they're trick cards or what. I don't think, I don't see anything trickery about them. There's a jack of clubs and a jack of hearts inside a little thing. Oh, no, okay. But uh, one of them has a false back on it. Uh, so it has a place, like on the card, it, the card's like an envelope. Uh, so you could probably hide something in the card. Uh, cool. So I'd, ass I'd assume you use that for, like, uh, making up appearing banknotes or whatever. Okay, now I have another one, uh, another money one. And this one says, please read instructions before folding. So I will not fold it, but it's uh, amazing moving money. But the de there's some details on there. Looks kind of like, I don't know if anybody like was a Disney fan back in the day, but they had, uh, what are those called, Mickey Bucks or something? Disney Dollars, they were called. Uh, Ray just yelled at me. Uh, so the first one looks like a dollar, but it has Marty on the top, and it says Mind Blowing Magic 1, 1989. And it has Marty's signature. Fellow magicians agree never to reveal the secrets. 37, uh, 10, 9, 20, 10, 1089. And then on the other side, you could see, okay, there's a, uh, there's something with the way you fold it, uh, uh, that I don't understand. Uh, so one side, and then the other one is a 10 and it says 37, 10, 89 has Marty. And the other side is the same. It's a 10. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, like, I guess some trick that involves folding, that's all we know. And also like on the 10 is like a symbol. It looks a little bit, it's like a, what is that called? Like a, I don't know, an outline of what looks just in my imagination is uh what's that? What's uh, Pinocchio's conscience? What was his name? The Jiminy Cricket. Obviously, it's not, but, you know, maybe you'll say Jiminy. Okay, let's reach in. Let's reach a little bit deeper this time. Okay, oh, boy, I got something. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a square. Okay, so this one is a cube, like a, di like a dice, but larger. I would say it's actually almost exactly one inch a square. Or each square is one inch uh, across. Uh, I don't know what's that called. Uh, circum not the circumference. That's a circle. And on each each part of the dice or the square, one has an ear, one has a mouth, one has a nose, one has an eye, one has a hand. Let's count. Uh, oh, one has a head with a question mark. Okay, ear, head with question mark, nose, eye. And then hand, head, mouth, eye. And then they also have different squares uh, for colors, like uh, the head has a blue squares. The mouth has white squares, the eye has red or orange squares, hand has green, ear has yellow, mouth has white, uh, nose has uh, pink. So I don't know. This I have really no idea. Some sort of cubing, I don't know, like uh, some sort of magic, obviously. Okay, so we're digging deep here. Oh, we got something. 
Oh, interesting. So this one is a marker, and it has a clip to tie, like to clip the marker to your body or to something on the cap. Uh, I don't know if that's so you don't lose it or that's some sort of magic trick. Oh, I mean, I wonder if the marker's dried out. I don't think it's ever been opened. Maybe dried out. I can't tell. Um, I don't know. This may be like one of those magic pens. Uh, or it's a, a marker that I'll never lose the cap to because you could clip it and it has a piece of string attached to the cap. Uh, but I do remember some of those magic tricks like where you'd cl clip something and then it would retract or whatever. I don't remember what it was. I, I think I had something like that, and that was one of the few ones that I could actually do. And then I think all of us have been, maybe not everyone, but here's something that used to be a Christmas present people would get. And I always thought it was fun. I never got it as a gift, but it's like a real, well, maybe it's not a real dollar. Maybe you just get the kit to use with a real dollar, but it's like a piece of almost invisible, a long piece of nearly invisible, like fishing line and like a retractor with a button and then you clip it to real money and you put it on the ground, you know, and you've seen it and then you can kind of make it come back. Uh, I've fallen victim to that before more than once. Like, that's the kind of thing when I saw it in real life, I was like, I thought that only happened in cartoons, but now I'm seeing it in real life. Uh, and I don't know if it was a friend or a sibling that had that or a cousin or something. Okay, I reached in, I got another one of these pieces of... Uh, um, pizza peel silver with the uh, house flying friend down there. But this one just has one on one side and none on the other. Is this, this is, couldn't, couldn't get more sleepy than this, right? It's like, uh, okay, here we go. We got the cards. Uh, but yeah, this is like totally like sleep podcast. Okay. This is magician secret cards. Uh, it has like a Marty label on it. And then the class, the cards are first class playing cards. So here's a, another tangent, right? Is that uh, I did get a pack of trick cards. Once I bought myself one. And then another time I, um, I think I was g given one. Or maybe not. Uh, we claim exclusive rights in Ace of Spades, Jokers, and Back Design. First Class Limited UK. Classic playing cards. So the cards I had, I think the cards I was given, and this might have been when I was like in college, uh, was, so maybe I bought them. But they had like a, a way you could read the cards, like the cards on the back of them. They had a very subtle design with a clo with clocks. And so you could read the person's card. If it was down in front of you, you could do this quick shorthand math. I mean, I couldn't do it because I'm not good at math or memorizing. But you'd say, oh, that's at four. That means it's a club. And then it's at a 10. It's a 10 of clubs. Uh, there was a way to do that. And then I think they were also, whatever they call that, uh, that magicians have, where the cards are cut in a certain way. But then I think there was instructions, of course, that I didn't read, just like, just like we're doing now. And I never, uh, I think you had to organize the cards in another way. The other cards I had that I remember, I think I bought, were like, uh, you, or maybe these were the same ones. There was like, uh, I think, so there's 52 cards in a normal deck, correct? And I think this one that I'm imagining in my mind, it had... Uh, like 26 regular cards, what's 52? That's 26, right, is half of that. And then it had um, 26, like, jack of hearts or something. Uh, but that might have been a different deck, and I, or maybe it had 50%. So these are whatever they're called. I can see when I open the box that the box is staggered. So there's, but it's still in plastic. Oh, boy, cool. talk about happy. So I'll be right back. I'm going to open these cards. So I opened the cards. I haven't looked at them other than the bottom card is a three of clubs. Um, and um, I will say one thing, though. Like, I know that if you're a real magician or, like, I'm like somebody that actually practices illusions, that's what I'd say. Like, uh, someone that's really good at practicing illusions. I know, like, maybe this is just, like, picturing these kind of more tr packaged tricks 
as just people's entry point into magic. Um, okay, so this deck, I will say, is similar oh, whoa. Um, to exactly what I was saying. I'm not going to reveal the cards, uh, but I would say this is a 50-50 deck. There is a Joker who is a magician, a cartoon magician, there's three clubs, there's spades and hearts and clubs and kings and aces and three, four. And, uh, oh, there's a black and white joker. And then there's a couple blank cards too. So again, this is the kind of card, um, the deck you kind of got to figure out. Uh, uh, I don't know. You got to follow the instructions. I don't see any, um, well, let's check the back to see if there's any difference in the back. I don't necessarily see that this is the one, like the one I was talking about, that has a thing where you can um, think. But I do think I had this similar deck, which it's like 50-50. So that's the magic cards. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it matches the other ones with the fake, fake bat, the false back, where you could hide money or whatever. And... I don't know. I think I went to one. I'd like to go to more magic shows. Uh, there's a magician that was big in San Francisco about 15, 12 years ago, Christian. And he, I think, moved to L.A. And I think it's Christian C. was his name. And this was back uh, when I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. This was before the podcast. And I was volunteering so this would have been 2000, I don't know when it was, but I was volunteering. Uh, I got into like, I did some volunteers uh, helping at uh, San Francisco Fringe Fest because if you volunteered as an usher or a ticket taker or whatever, then you could kind of be, you got into the shows, you could get on the waiting list to get into shows for free. And then the theater that ran San Francisco, uh, I think it was the Exit Theater, um, I started volunteering there a few times, uh, and, uh, um, like I would, what I would do is, uh, I would, uh, I, I would like just take tickets or whatever, Usher, and I did his show a few times, uh, but I didn't go into the show. I don't know why, uh, but he was really nice and, and so I never saw him perform, unfortunately, but I, I would, I, I would like to get into going to more magic shows is what I'm saying. And, you know, I, you know, in the next couple of years. Okay. I got another one here. Um, another card trick, uh, and we can confirm my other assumption about the cards. It is the same card back. So it can match your main card set. And this one is color changing kings to aces, it's called. And they come in their own little envelope that make it easy to store. And I don't know how it works, uh, but it's uh, you got two aces and two kings uh, with uh, possibly a uh, little deception in there, but uh, you got four cards. And somehow, if you follow the instructions, you can make the kings change into aces somehow with a little sleight of hand, as they say. All right, we're still digging here, and uh, ooh, I got something. Let me, let's do this. My hand is in the bag. I'm trying to think. Okay, so I have another cube in my hand. I also have a piece of string. Got finally got it off my finger. This is a cube. It has one sunken part, uh, and that's all I know. I'm pulling it out. Oh, it's an ice cube. Uh, this seems more like one of those gags you would have. Uh, it's a it's a fake a, a lucite ice cube with a flying friend in there, a, a plastic one, not a real one. Don't worry, flying house friend, uh, similar to those things, uh, like those pizza peels. So, so I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't like. Uh, I'm not a big fan of April Fools. Like I prefer to be fooled by by an illusionist uh, for fun uh, than uh, you know for sport. Okay, I'm back in here. These I have no idea. So these ones are just um, uh, rectangles uh, with stickers on them, rounded edges. One has a rounded edge. One is n one has flat edges. 
And one is a yellow on both sides rectangle that has rounded edges and then a red. And I think there's a third one, but this one is red rectangle with flat edges. And that's, uh, yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> that's, uh, I have no idea even what a uh, trick it would be. Okay, but going back in here, eyes closed. Let me see. Okay, I have something else in my hand. It's a box. Uh, it's plastic. It has a cap, uh, a top, so like a square cube. It's gray. I don't know what's in here. So this is it's a gray, like a gift box, but a tiny, like a one and a half. Uh, oh, and it's empty. So you could either put, I guess in this gift box, you could either put the... Um, the cube or the ice cube in there. And I'm just going to see if I can fit this, uh, the square with the hand and mouth in there. It doesn't exactly fit perfectly. So I don't know what this is for. Uh, it's interesting though. And it actually has a look like, uh, it has kind of like, they did a good job of giving it a rougher look too. Cause at first glance, I thought it was made from paper. Uh, okay. I'm reaching back in. Okay, I'm pulling out yet another card trick here. So a lot of card tricks, but really well organized. This one is Mysterious Mind Power. So it's the same cards. And in this one, I guess I shouldn't reveal too much. Uh, oh, wow, but it's just uh, one, two, three, four, five cards. They're all suited cards. Uh, and no... At least for me, no clue how it would work. I don't see any um, way to tell these cards apart, but I mean, that's not a, it doesn't mean I know anything. I'm just looking at the backs of them to see. And I don't see any differences, but they may be subtle differences or there might be something else to them. Uh, that's cool. I mean, I, I really, like, I'm deceived by even how to deceive someone with this illusion. I mean, that's cool. Like, uh, that's some serious trickery. Okay, so this bag is really, this bag kind of looks a little bit like a, a backpack someone would have on their way to pre-K. Like, it's cute. I, I, like, I don't, wouldn't associate it with street magic. I'd say, well, that's a cute bag uh, your son has. Uh, so, I don't know. But, I mean, that's not an insult or anything. I just, when I picked it up, I said, that's a cute little bag there, young <laughs> little Andy. Okay. Oh boy. Cool. Uh, so I reached in, I got a key, an old fashioned key, like you'd find in an old fashioned house. I didn't, I don't think I've seen any old fashioned locks, uh, but it has, uh, it's like one of those brass keys. This one is silver. It's definitely got some substance to it. Uh, like an oval handle, then the long thing, then a nub, and then the key part with, uh, four branches, but yeah, it's a key. Uh, what can I say? Like, uh, I don't know if it's one of those keys that opens every door. I, I kind of doubt it because uh, if it is, it'd be the best uh, investment I've ever made in my life. Okay, here we go. I'm digging to the bottom here. And I'll know, I won't make any jingles, but this is a jingle jangler. It's a chain and uh, interesting. So it... Uh, Almost looks like this. It's a lighter material than you'd make a do dog collar out of. Um, but it uh, has a ring at one end and then a ring like, uh, what do you call it? What are these called? Links, right? One, two, three links down, there's another ring. And then at the other end of the chain, there's nothing. So it's just like a, a chain with two rings. Uh, so interesting. I, I don't know what you do with it. I mean, definitely illusion. And I don't see any, um, I'm giving it a little tug. Oh, wait, one link. Uh, we have one interesting thing. Let me look a little deeper here. Okay. I try not to jingle. And, uh, so I thought one of the links was caught, but I thought it was maybe some sort of secret magnet ring, but it's not. And I'm pulling on the rings. I'm pulling on the chain and I'm not seeing anything. Let me see if I can, like, it's one of those dancing rings. Nope. And the other ring is secure. So if the magician was asking me to check it, uh, I'd say everything looks secure. Okay. Though I do see a little bit of possible trickery in the rings where you could hold the ring 
So maybe these rings are detachable. I'm not sure, though. Could just be part of the manufacturing process. Like, how do you get a ring on a thing anyway, right? Okay, going to the bottom of the bag. Oh, we got something else here. We got a rubber, broken rubber band. That probably was holding together the cards or something. And then a lock. Okay, so this is a little tiny pad, pad lock. It has MM on it. Definitely is too small for that big key. It is literally a half inch. Um, it might work with the, uh, I assume, I guess I shouldn't assume with magic, but that it's unlocked. Uh, I haven't seen any keys, but it goes with that uh, chain. And let's see what else I can find in here. Okay, got another piece. Got some money, some loose money, and then incredible instant money. Uh, okay, these ones have a little trick to them, so I don't want to reveal them, but uh, I don't know what the trick is. And again, organized uh, very well. And then this loose money probably fell out of something, um, but it want, this one is uh, also, th those are all tens. Uh, some are complete tens and some are illusionary tens. So more money tricks. Uh, this one is a plastic bag with uh, one piece of kind of felt in there. Don't know what that does, but probably magical. Uh, then I just, Ooh, cool. Okay. So there's, I got two things here. I got, Oh, and that was what one of the rubber bands was for that broke. But, uh, one of them is another rectangle, black rectangle with a blue rectangle on it. it. That one has, this one has one rounded edge and one flat edge. It goes with those other two rectangles. Then I have, uh, a piece of plastic with, a uh, what should be four rubber bands around the, it's a rectangle, but it's uh, two pieces of clear plastic. And then in between the two pieces of clear plastic is another rectangle with a big circle in it. That's orange. And then there should be four rubber bands holding the two pieces of plastic over the other thing. So I don't know if this is one of those things where you stick something through like broken glass or what. Uh, I think that was one of the tricks I could do is like when you could stick your, what is that thing called? Uh, when I had a magic wand through something. So, but I, there's no, this, there's no, I don't know if, in, here's the thing in street magic, can you have a magic wand? Uh, I don't know. Okay. And then there's a little bag with a question mark on it, like the Riddler might have a black, a small black bag, about three inches by one inch uh, with a yellow question mark on it. Might, maybe that ball goes in there. This one is the most curious thing, and I'm afraid it, it, it uh, and I think it's just, I think it's fake. It says, uh, uh, it, uh, it pretend, it's like some sort of gag. Uh, it has to do with those, uh, flying friend trick, and it says uh, that, uh, it has, uh, so I don't know. That must be something. It says store in a cold environment to pre 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 prevent, um, them flying around. And let's see what else we got here. I think that was it. That's all the magic tricks there. Perfect. So we got through it all. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, Marty's magic, street magic bag or whatever it's called, mind-blowing tricks. Uh, and so you could check in with me and see the, <laughs> read the instructions and maybe I give it to my daughter. I don't know if she's into magic. Uh, maybe I learned one trick uh, for patrons. I don't know. Uh so we'll have to see uh, how it goes, but thanks. Uh, and uh, I hope the one trick I'm good at, which is uh, keeping you company, taking your mind off stuff, is uh, is uh, working. It's not a trick, though, really. It is but misdirection. So I guess I do use misdirection. I'm trying to you know, make you listen to me and my foibles. Uh, so there's a, another episode you could queue up right now if you need some more. I'm misdirected by misdirection. Uh, good night, everybody. All right. I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently. Um, I really appreciate everybody that joined and uh, supported the show. And uh, I want to thank him and say thanks. Thanks and good night to Mary, Steve, and Chana. Thanks. Thanks and good night to Lisa, Josephine, 
and Dacus. Uh, thanks, thanks, and good night to Nicholas, Haley, and Laney. Thanks, thanks, and good night to Caitlin, Ryan, and Thomas. Thanks, thanks, and good night to Jesse, Kaya, and Benjamin. Thanks, thanks, and good night to John, Misty, and Heather. Thanks, 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 and good night to Emily, Christina, and Jim. Thanks, thanks, and good night to John, Hannah, and Jackie. Thanks, thanks, and good night to Christine, Brian, and Patty. And thanks, thanks, and good night to Emma and Martha. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. Couldn't do it without all you. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I'm uh, tucking in here. You could support the show on Patreon, support our sponsors, just spread the word about our, our podcast. You could get rewarded for it, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. Or just support, you know, spread the word about podcasting in general. Helps the show, too. And I've been able to add more shows in the feed over the past year. Thanks to some of these Chuck You In sponsors like this one. Thanks and good night.